noticed that on some beaches like this one, when you're walking, the sand actually squeaks or sings. Squeaky Beach at uh, Wilson's Promontory is a good place for this. And you have to do it really up here in the dry sand, not down there where it's uh, all wet. It doesn't work so well there. If you look at the sand, it just looks like ordinary sand. Although you might notice that in many places where it squeaks, it's rather whiter than usual. Beautiful sand. And to see why the whiteness matters and why the dryness matters, I need to take some of it inside. So come along and see what's happening. And there it is, the singing sand. Notice how white this one is compared with the ordinary sand. And watch this, even with a spoon. Singing sands, ordinary sand, no squeak. Singing, ordinary. And you can do it with almost anything. So there really is a difference. It really does sing. But why? Well, if you take a sample of the singing sand and a sample of the ordinary sand and bring them over here, you can do effectively what is an inspection of them through a microscope. You haven't got a microscope? No, but you might have access to a 35mm projector. And this is what you do. I've labelled these two as S for singing, and I'll pour a bit out, and O for ordinary sand, the yellow one. Now, without a microscope, you don't have to worry, because if you can get a piece of shirt box or overhead projector, clear plastic, and cut it the same size as a 35mm slide, you can slip that into the projector and magnify anything that's on it. And that's going to be your little particles of sand. So cut one that size, put it down on the tabletop, and then to fix your sand on it, use clear sticky tape. And here we go. We'll put ordinary over on one side, just by touching the sticky tape to the ordinary and getting a, a sort of decent layer of sand on it, flick it off, and stick it on there. That's my ordinary sample. And then another piece of sticky will give me my singing sand sample, like that. Flick it off and stick it beside the other one. Now, so I don't get mixed up when I'm looking at them, I'll label those O for ordinary and S for singing. At that stage, pull it off the tabletop, cut off those little bits of sticky tape that are projecting, and give it a last flick, because you don't want bits of grit in the projector. It's apt to make you unpopular with whoever owns the projector. That's quite safe like that. Bring it over, remember to put it in upside down, and turn the projector on, and focus it up. And you can see it very clearly there, what's going on. The ordinary sand has got big chunks, and tiny chunks, and medium-sized chunks, and lots of all of them. It's a real mixture. Whereas the singing sand has very much more uniform chunks. They're all more or less the same size. And that size business is very important in determining why the sand sings. We'll come back to size in just a tick. But first of all, why does the colour matter? Well, in this case, the colour matters because that white singing sand is almost pure quartz. Quartz is a very hard rock. It's almost uh, the same sort of stuff as glass. So these singing sands are evenly sized and shaped particles of quartz, and that's what makes them so white as well. Well, ordinary sand is very often yellow, and it may have quartz in it, but it's got lots of other things too. A tremendous amount of it is ground up shell, and because shell's softer, it grinds up into smaller particles, and that's why you get all the different sizes. Different sorts of rock, different sorts of shell, and a great mixture of different sized and shaped particles and different so sort of, sorts of substances. Well, let's uh, move on and see why all those things matter. And if quartz is like glass, we can make a model of the singing sands with a handful of uniform-sized marbles. There they are, all the same size and all glass. If you get dry marbles like that and hold a handful of them and crunch them together, you find that those glassy surfaces grip. And as you try and push them apart, like walking on the dry singing sands, they grit and scrape and you get a crunching. And the size of the particle determines the note of the crunching. And if it's very small, the particle size, then the note will be very high, and you get this effect. The sort of singing that you get when you scrunch those dry particles of singing sands together. Well, what about the ordinary sand? Well, it's different sized particles, and they're all made of different things. And my model's got ball bearings and plastic beads and wooden beads and different sized particles. But if you take all of those and scrunch them together, what you get is that the little pieces go into the spaces between the big. And so it doesn't scrunch in the same sort of way it packs. And because there's not so much quartz or glass rubbing on quartz or glass, 
it doesn't scrunch in the same way either. So it doesn't sing. And that's the ordinary sand, which just goes crunch. Like that, when you walk on it. Well, why does water make a difference? It may not make a terrific distance, difference, but if you take the dry sands there, the singing sands like that, and scrunch them, part of the reason they scrunch is because they're dry and they get a grip on each other's surface. If you could oil them, they wouldn't do that. And water is much the same as oil. It lubricates those surfaces. So they slide over each other instead of gripping. And when you crunch those together, they skid around, they don't crunch and they don't sing. So those are some of the mysteries of singing sands. <laughs>